In the last video, we came to know about the technology adoption life cycle. We learned about the different stages of the life cycle. We also learned about how the customers are going to behave in each stages and how a company should try to reach each of those customers in all of the stages. And in that video, we talked about a specific problem called chasm. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what is chasm and how to overcome chasm to become a successful business. So from the last video, we know that the difference between early adopters and early majority is called chasm. Or in other words, we can say that the difference between early market and mainstream market can be called chasm. These are the visual representations of early markets and mainstream market. The reason a lot of companies cannot reach the mainstream market is because they get used to how the business gets done in the early market and they do not realize the vast difference between these two groups. And yes, these circles are a good representation of the sheer differences between the size of these two groups of people. So in order to actually cross the chasm, you have to know how each of these markets behave. Let's start with early market first. The people in the early market are risk takers. They are always willing to try out new technology. And this market is actually very easy to capture. In fact, they are actually so easy to capture that you do not have to provide a complete product to the market itself. A prototype can get the job done and you can sell that to the early market. But obviously, if you want to go big, you have to know about the mainstream market. The mainstream market consists of early majority, late majority and laggards. In my opinion, I don't think you have to try very hard to reach the laggards because they are actually going to resist almost everything. And when you reach early majority and late majority successfully, the laggards will follow them no matter what. The mainstream market always seeks reference before buying a product. They want to know what they are buying is actually good or not. And they will not tolerate any unfinished product or prototype. They require finished products. Now we are going to get to know how to actually cross the chasm to reach the mainstream market. First of all, you have to have a completed product in your hand. As I have already said, no prototypes will be accepted by the mainstream market. So if you think you do not have to work that hard enough to reach any mainstream market, you are gravely mistaken. And also to succeed in the mainstream market, you also need to have proper customer service. When a new technology is introduced, you need to have 24 seven customer service involved and you also need to provide technical support to them so that they can be reassured to use the products and not get worried about it. System integration also needs to be done. This is actually a technical term, so I'm not going to elaborate on that. If you want me to elaborate, you can comment down below. And the next way you can actually cross the chasm is through market segmentation. The mass market is always going to be skeptical about your new technological product or service at first. So in order to solve that problem, you need to target a niche market and and fulfill their needs properly. If you are successful in fulfilling the needs in a small market, they are going to provide references to a large number of people. And you already know that the mainstream market is going to always look for references before buying any new product or service. And that is how you can capture the mainstream market. And in order to cross the chasm, you also need to think about partnerships. A partnership is going to provide you with association and help. If your partner is well known in the market, the mainstream customers are going to associate the success of your partner to your product and they are going to buy from you. And obviously partnership is going to help you a lot to provide a completely finished product to the market. 
And when you are trying to enter a market with a new product or service with a completely new technology, you are going to have to think about your competition first. Obviously, there is going to be competition. You can think about it this way. If there is no competition, it would mean that no one is providing the product or service. It can also mean that no one actually wants that product or service. So there is no market for it. Now, when you are innovating with a new technology and providing a new product or service to the people, you are solving a problem that customers already have. You are trying to enter a market that already has some established businesses that are already solving that specific problem for the customers. What you are trying to do is to enter the market and solve the problem for the customers in a better way and in an advanced way. That way you are going to completely outshine your competitors. The main goal for you should be to perform so well that you are going to outshine all of the competitors and people are not going to be able to think of the old way of solving the problem. So with the things I have talked in this video, you can expect a new video about blue ocean and red ocean strategy in the future. I am not going to promise when it is going to happen, but it will happen. And now I hope you understand how you are going to be able to cross the chasm when you try to invent a new technology to solve the problems of a market. You can comment below on what topic do you want me to do a video next. But for now, this is it for this topic. Thank you all for watching. And leave a like if you learned something from the video. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel to get future notifications whenever I upload. But now this is time for bonus content. For bonus today, keeping in line with the previous video, I am going to talk about the names of the 12 months of the year in Spanish. Here we go. First you have Enero for January. Then Febrero. Then Marzo. Then Abril. Not April, Abril. Then Mayo, not Mayo, Mayo. Then Junio, Julio for July. Then Agosto, not Augusto or Agosto, Agosto for August. The easy thing about Spanish alphabet is A is always going to be pronounced as A. In English, A can be pronounced as A. A, A, O. But in Spanish, whenever you see A, it is always going to be pronounced as A. Agosto, Marzo, Abril, Mayo. And then you have Septiembre for September. Octubre for October. Noviembre for November. And December for December. Let me go through them again. Enero, Febrero, Marzo, Abril, Mayo, Junio, Julio, Agosto, Septiembre, Octubre, Noviembre, Diciembre. And that was the official end for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something new today.